And so we're really interested in understanding, you know, the biology, you know, of human disease and understanding, you, you know, you know, what goes wrong in, in, in various human diseases like diabetes or cancer or in, immune disorders or Alzheimer's disease. And the hope is that if we understand, you know, the, the, the fundamental biology that underlies the disease process, that, you know, we can then sort of, you know, play the engineer and come up with better ideas about, uh, you know, how to better treat or, you know, disease in the future. And, uh, you know, that's what all our research is about, really understanding, you know, the fundamental mechanisms that underlie human disease and then trying to use this information to come up with uh, new ideas about how to better treat or even cure the major human diseases. So if we look at uh, you know, very basic processes that go wrong you know, in, in human diseases. So for example, you know, one of the first uh, projects that actually our unit was formed, you know, formed in 1990 to study was to just a very simple process of understanding how you know, glucose is metabolism is regulated in the muscle by insulin, the hormone insulin. And you know, we discovered the whole pathway by which uh, you know this 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 process is is controlled, and you know this has led to a great understanding of you know type two diabetes and what goes wrong in the pathways to make them you know resistant to insulin, and uh, you know result in the disease being formed, and it also leads to you know lots of interesting ideas about how we can better treat you know the disease in the future. Yeah, it's very interesting. Every biological pathway or system has to be controlled. You know, it has to occur in the right order, the right sequence of events. So A has to occur, then B, then C, then D, to, 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 to trigger a biological response. And it turns out that you know, virtually all diseases are, are caused by disruptions in these control pathways. So what happens is that certain pathways, for example, in cancer, that control cell growth, that are normally kept inactive or at very low levels, suddenly become overactivated, become liberated by mutations that occur in, in cancer-causing genes. So the pathways that you know, regulate cell growth become permanently switched on, and this results in the cancer cells from growing inappropriately you know, from their organs and then spreading all over the body, and ultimately uh, you know, you know, causing the death of the patient. And uh, you know, another situation where the, the opposite occurs is, that, is actually, for example, in, in diabetes. In diabetes, what happens is that, you, you know, the body normally responds to insulin. So when you have a meal, you're taking in sugar, you know, that liberates insulin from, from the pancreas of the cell. And that signals to the tissues of the body that you've just eaten, and it forces them to take in the, the sugar into the tissues, which is used as an energy source. But what happens in, uh, you, in a patient with diabetes is that, you know, you know, through uh, mutations or through lack of exercise or obesity, the pathways that recognize the insulin become desensitized or, or less efficient at recognizing the insulin. So what happens in this situation is that, you know, when you have a meal, the, the insulin is still produced, but it's no longer able to elicit a biological response. So then you have very high blood glucose levels and, and that causes, you know, a lot of secondary complications like kidney disease, eye disease, and you know heart failure. So uh, you know, so it's, it's it's really very important to understand you know the control mechanisms. The same thing happens in uh, in immune all all immune disorders that your immune cells recognise bacteria or viruses, and this triggers an important immune response that ends up killing the bacteria and viruses. But um, you know sometimes some of immune disorders are caused by you know breakdown in those pathways that recognize the bacteria and the, and the viruses. So in this situation, what happens is that the, the, you know, the immune cells aren't able to kill the bacteria and viruses, so the bacteria and viruses spread throughout your body you know, and, and cause disease. Other times, what happens is the pathway is too active in immune cells. So even when you're not infected with the bacteria or viruses, you know, your, your immune cells think they're being attacked and therefore you know, become active inappropriately. And then this is very bad. This causes arthritis and you know lupus and many other very severe immune disorders because these immune cells they start attacking the natural body rather than the bacteria. And uh, so in this situation, you know, it's, it's about trying to switch off these inappropriate pathways. But the, 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 what's really exciting is when you, once you understand those pathways and what goes wrong, you know, you can really start thinking about ways to. Uh, you know, treat human disease. So, for example, in, in the cancer area, 
you know, many of the genes that are mutated that cause cells to grow are, are, now, are now all known from the sequencing of the, the, the genome of, of, of people with cancer. And what's very exciting is most of the, these genes encode, you know, a class of, of enzymes that we, our unit specializes in work, and these are called protein kinases, and then they're critical regulatory you know, molecules, these enzymes, and they become overactivated. And, um, you know, and, and, and so, so, the, so the, the, this is very important because we know that the enzyme is too active in cancer and it causes the cells to grow. So you can de now develop a drug that actually, you know, binds to that enzyme and switches this enzyme off or restores it back to the normal level within the cancer cell. And, you know, these, you know, and we've been working on this in our unit for the last 20 years or so, trying to work with cut drug companies, you know, telling them, you know, how to develop drugs that, you know, target these, these, these enzymes that we work with. And, you know, it's, it's very exciting now because a lot of this work is coming to, coming to fruition and there's actually in the last 10 years or so there's been 25 cancer drugs approved to, that, 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 that target this class of enzyme that are called protein kinases. And uh, they make, last year they made a, a cumulative sales of uh, $15 billion, or, 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 you know, to, together. And, and many of these drugs are actually having, starting to have very profound effects you know, on cancer patients. For example, you know, there's, a class, there's a class of drug called Glivec, for example, that enables patients of a certain type of leukemia to uh, basically, it completely dissolves their, their tumors and the patients can now survive, you know, where, where, whereas before they, you know, they, they, they weren't able to. There's uh, another fantastic example that our unit actually was very much involved with. It's a new drug called uh, Darafinib, and this is used for skin cancer. And um, you know, our unit discovered or was very heavily involved in the, the working out the, the target of this drug, which is an enzyme called BRAF. And this is actually mutated in most patients with skin cancer, and this drives the growth of the, the melanoma cells in the skin cancer. And we helped GSK, you know, develop this uh, Darafinib drug. You know, from work in our units, and uh, this was approved about a year ago for treatment of uh, you know, patients with skin cancer, and then this is also having you know, quite a traumatic effect in the, you know, in, the, in the clinical treatment of this condition. But I think this is what's really exciting. This is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, there's there's 25 drugs approved, but you know we know of uh, hundreds and hundreds of other compounds undergoing preclinical developments. You know, not only in cancer in immune disorders and hypertension and neurogeneration and uh, you know the hope is that you know you, you know probably at the moment about 30 percent of all research and development that's ongoing on the pharmaceutical industry is focused at targeting you know these enzymes that control biology and well, biological processes and the hope is that if we can harness this information uh, these drugs are successful that they, they could literally be you know you know many many you know, many more enzymes, drugs coming onto the market, and this could really revolutionize the treatment of uh, you know, all types of uh, human disease. You know, the, the, you know, the MRC unit which we work here in Dundee is it's really an, an amazing place, actually. We have, uh, you know, 20 major group leaders who work here, and, you know, you know, they're leaders in their research field. And the reason they choose to come to work here is because we have such a expertise in studying the, the pathways that control biology, and I think we have you know, uh, you know, a really, it was a, for us it's all about having an amazing environment for our researchers. So we, we provide the state-of-the-art facilities, we, we have very good funding, and one of the most important things that we do which is distinguishes ourselves from other people is we, we, we interact very extensively with the pharmaceutical industry. So maybe about a third of our research focus is, is really geared at, you, you know, working with pharmaceutical companies to try and accelerate you know the production of drugs in in this area of research that that I mean that we do in. So uh, you know our researchers come here. They they do fundamental you know biological research. You know to understand what's going wrong in disease. But as soon as they understand that and they come up with ideas about you know how drugs could be developed. You know we work very very closely with the pharmaceutical companies as well as leading clinicians of the field because they 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 also are very important in guiding us. You know to make sure that what we're doing is you know, sense makes sense from a clinical point of view, and you know, so a lot of the focus is, is really aimed at working with, with with drug companies, and you know, but always at the same time doing new fundamental research. You know, if you don't do 
fundamental research. If you don't understand biology, you know, if you don't understand how something works, you can't fix it afterwards. You really have to, you know, understand the fundamentals before you can come up with ideas about fixing it. And if you don't do the, you know, there's always an argument, you know, whether the government should fund fundamental blue sky research or just put all the money in translational research. But my view is if you don't do the fundamental work research, the blue sky research, there won't be anything to translate tomorrow, you know, because you, you, you won't know anything, you know, you'll just uh, you know, know what you knew yesterday. So it's really critical, you know, to be at the forefront of the field, you, it's really at the fundamental research side that keeps you at the, you know, the forefront. And it's, it is an amazing environment here. We have in our unit about 180 researchers. I think they come from 30 different countries. I think in my lab, I have about 14 or 15 people. And I don't think I have anyone in my lab working from Scotland. You know, they come from uh, you know, all, the, all the different countries in the world. And that's what makes science so brilliant because we don't have any barriers. You know, people, whatever color, skin they are, religion or, or beliefs they have, they can come and work together, you know, you know to, to understand biology and you know, it's one of the most exciting things you can possibly do. It's like uh, it's the biology is like a whole universe. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, you know, it's a different. It's a, it's a biological universe, and to understand, I think we still understand less than point one percent of what's 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 in this universe and how it works, and how it's controlled. And you know, if anyone wants to, uh, you know, do something really exciting with their life, and you, you know. You know um, what they're passionate about. You know, science is is, is amazing. You know, career to go into because you can really, you, you know, discover things, see things that no one's ever seen before. You know, come up with new ideas.